I'm Eduardo, and this is the JavaScript Hunted House. Good work! I knew that Brad book seemed a little suspicious. Let's now continue our story and talk about a very important topic, functions. When we create a statement, or even a block of code with multiple statements, they perform an action at a time, as we have seen so far. To repeat an action, several lines must be rewritten, resulting in an unnecessary replication of code. What if we could tell JavaScript to repeat these statements for us in a simple and organized way? That's exactly what functions do. We put this code, which will be used multiple times, inside a function, which will have a name for identification. Recognizing that you called ghost alert function, JavaScript finds the declared function and executes the code inside the brackets. To declare a function, we use the word function to tell JavaScript what we want to create. After that, we type what will be the name of the function, in this example, ghost alert. Open and close parentheses in brackets to determine the body of the function, or function code, as you prefer. Here, we are declaring the ghost alert function and putting an alert inside it. If we save the code and refresh the browser, nothing happens. Why? Nothing happened because we defined the function, but we didn't invoke it. The code inside it will only be executed when the function is invoked. We use the function name to invoke the function or call the function, a term usually used. A function must be called inside a JavaScript code. And it can also be called inside another function. In this case, we are calling the ghost alert function inside the all alerts function. And when we call the all alerts function, ghost alert will be called automatically. A function executes a block of code. We already know that. The ghost name function, for example, is assigning the word venomous vins for the ghost name variable every time it is called. But what if we wanted a different ghost name? We would have to create another function for this, and then another one for the third ghost? Absolutely no. In this case, we need to use parameters. The parameters allows us to pass values to a function every time it is called, making it more dynamic. We declare the parameters inside parentheses, setting a unique name that will work as a variable within the function. In ghost name function, we set the parameter name and say that this value will be assigned to the variable ghost name. When we call the function, we pass any name as an argument and the JavaScript does the rest. Incredible, right? Any value that we place here, the function will receive it here and it may be used inside the code. We can also create a function that takes multiple parameters, as in this example. How many ghosts function takes three parameters, the three values which represent each one a ghost count. The function takes the parameters, declares a variable named total, sums the three numbers and assigns the result to the total. Finally, it displays an alert on the screen with the result. Parameters can be any type of variable, like a string, a number, or a boolean. And remember that a string will always have quotes, so it won't be treated as a variable. Functions can only execute a block of code, or execute a block of code and return a value. To accomplish this task, we must put the word return inside a function. Let's take as an example the how many ghosts method we created a while ago. The total number of ghosts is stored in the variable total, and after that, 
it is shown on the screen with an alert. If we replace this alert with a return total, whenever the function is called, it will return the sum of ghosts in the house. If we invoke it now, nothing will happen because we are not doing anything with the value. But we can call it inside an alert and again inside an inner HTML using the same function for different destinations. An important detail is when return is found, JavaScript returns the defined value and automatically exits the function. Any code placed below the return will not run, so beware. Another cool thing is that with the help of the return statement, functions can be used in the middle of strings to form sentences. Here we have two functions. Full name, receiving the first and the last name of a ghost. And age, receiving the age of a ghost in years and months. With the help of the function document.write, we can show a complete sentence in the browser. The first half of the sentence is created by full name function and the second half by the age function, which are connected by the word is. It's time to look at our inventory. How can we use what we just learned to upgrade it? Functions, let's see. What do we do countless times in an inventory? Add items. Let's create a function to do that. We know that we need to add an item to our slot, which is an li tag. In the add process, the only thing we'll change every time is the item, so we'll need a parameter for that. Let's create a function called add item, receiving the item parameter. We want this function to find the desired slot and place the given value inside it. So let's go step by step. The first step is to find the slot and we will do this by selecting the UL and accessing his only son, that is our slot. Now we'll use inner HTML to put the item received as a parameter in the slot. All set, let's test it. Perfect, item added. Job done. Let's now get back to our chapter. The variables inside a function can have different kinds of visibility. For example, a variable declared within a function cannot be accessed from outside that function because outside it, it does not exist. However, a variable declared outside a function can be used anywhere in the code. We call these different levels of visibility scopes. In JavaScript, when we declare a variable inside a function, it is called a local variable. This means that local variables have local scope and can only be accessed within the function. In this example, we can see that both functions have a local variable called name. Each one of them have local scope belonging to the function in which they were declared, so there is no conflict between them. On the other side, we can also declare variables with global scope. The variables declared outside a function become global. In this example, we have the variable current room declared outside the functions. This variable is global and it can be accessed in any part of the code. In short, Variables declared outside functions have a global scope and can be accessed and changed by all scripts in the page. Variables declared inside a function have a local scope and cannot be accessed from outside the function they were declared. There is another detail about variables you really need to know. We can also declare variables without using the keyword var. I know that can be a little confusing, but let me explain. Variables can be declared within functions without the keyword var, and then they become global after the execution of the function. This means that in this code, for example, the variable status has a global scope. 
the variable status local is only available in the scope of find Diana function. If we try to use the status local and status global variables before the function is called, both do not exist. We call the function, the two variables are created, but with different scopes. If we try to access the status local variable outside its scope, we'll see an error, since it does not exist outside its scope. The variable status global, however, can be accessed anywhere in the script, because after the end of the function execution, it has become a global variable. It may seem complicated, but don't worry, you'll master JavaScript functions in no time. See you soon. Good luck in the challenges.